I'm here. I'm here. Okay, someone was calling me for a reference. Oh, really? Somebody uh, put you down for a reference? Don't worry about the pain. It's just that I got it. I just need to know from you. Can you hear me? Um, I don't want to put you down for a reference. I'm not sure what the sound is. One moment. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry, I got your acrylic oil, no, and this is it. You bought me watercolors, whatever this is, and oil. You don't have Okay, I'm so sorry. I don't know what is happening. Um, we're gonna ask everyone to please mute their audios. Sounds like we might, might be better now. It sounds now. like there's some audio coming through. I'm trying to solve the issue. Okay. Thank you for bearing with us, everyone. So sorry about that. All right. Okay, I will. Kelly, can you hear us? Okay, so hear me okay? I can, can you guys hear me okay? And... All right, yes, I can hear you okay. Thank okay, you. perfect. Okay, hi everyone, welcome. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's always exciting things happening over here. Um, I'm also with Liquid Sex. I'll be your moderator today. I'm joined by artist Marla Morrison, who will be on how to create this sweet and refreshing impasto watermelon slice using our heavy body paint and a palette knife. Before we get started, um, just to reiterate what Kelly said, um, today's class is being recorded. So if you're hanging out with us today and watching and you wanna paint another time, or if you just feel like you missed something while painting along with us, you can rewatch this class in 24 to 48 hours. Uh, also do keep your eye on the chat throughout the class. So we'll be posting some links and information there that you might find helpful. And if you have any questions, just pop them on there. We'll do our best to get them answered for you. Uh, so with that, please enjoy the class, everyone. I will hand it over to Marla now to get it started. Hey, guys. Thanks a lot for bearing with us. And um, I like seeing that some, I guess, Hannah just had some watermelon. I definitely, whenever I see this painting, I want watermelon myself. So I'm glad we get to paint it today. And thanks a lot for being here. I'm really excited to have some paint time with you. So with that, we'll get started. And I've got the painting here. This is what we're going to be making. Um, if you we're going to sketch it really quickly and we can go ahead and go down to the um, desk view if you don't mind Kelly. Thank you. So this is what we're going to be painting today. It's a 9 by 12 canvas so I'm going to go ahead and switch this out and I'll keep it for reference as we work. But um, hopefully you have a pencil handy and we're just going to sketch it out just so we have a baseline of where we're going to put the paint. Okay. So I kind of like to get an idea of where my table line will be. So I'm just going to do a small little sketch here. And this doesn't have to be perfect because obviously we can paint over anything that we don't like. Um, it's a triangular shaped watermelon. And in fact, let me put this here so you can kind of see as we go. Um, but I'm just going to start right about here and just draw a quick line down. And then a uh, we'll have a little uh, dimension line of the watermelon. Now, I don't like where I put it, so I'm gonna move it over. So just a dimension line. And then we'll have the other half of the watermelon come down and go off the edge of the canvas. And I know you probably can't see that pencil, but I'm just having the watermelon slice go off the edge of the canvas. And then we want, I'm gonna move my C, I do this all the time. I'll start somewhere and then I'll readjust. So don't be afraid to do that. I'm gonna move my table line down because I want my watermelon slice to kind of um, be above that table line. And I'm gonna match this line to this top perspective line. And then I'm gonna draw the rind 
just so just a curvy semicircle. This will be the rind sitting on the table. And then just do another little line to get the white of the rind down. And this curvilinear line I'm going to have narrow at the bottom for perspective sake. Okay. So you can see where we are right here. Not perfect, but again, the thick paint is going to cover right over it. And then I want a little kind of a reminder of where my shadow will be. So I'll just sketch that in. And now I'm going to double check to make sure I have everything where I want it. And I think that will work. So pretty quick and easy, okay? Nothing super complicated. And if you don't like it as you're painting, you can just adjust as you go, okay? So I'll move this out of the way again. Get this lined up. And we're working with our heavy body color today. Um, this is a really nice texture of acrylic, uh, I think. Uh, it, it gives an oil-like feel to acrylic paint. And the other thing I really like about it is it's easy to scrape smooth if I want a flat texture or to leave thick if I want something to have a little more dimension. When I squeeze out my palette, I usually, this is just my idiosyncrasy, you can do what you want, but I like to start with my lightest value colors at the top and go down to darker value. So I'm gonna start with the titanium white heavy body. And guys, I will tell you, I'll probably squeeze out more paint than I need um, just because I'd rather have a little too much than too little. But the nice thing about palette paper, if you, uh, there's several things you can do if you have excess paint. You can let it dry on the palette paper and then just uh, reuse them as a mini acrylic skins, which you can look that up or, you know, we can talk about that at a different time. Or sometimes what I'll do is I'll take any excess paint and paint it on a little scrap paper and then I can tear that up into collage. So I just like to mention that because I know paint is not cheap. We want to make use of it, but I'd rather squeeze out a little more than I think I need and have to keep reopening the, the container. But if you're going to do like I'm doing, this is a probably about a teaspoon and a half of paint. That, that was the uh, CAD free yellow light. And then this is our quinacridone crimson. Need quite a bit of this. So I'm gonna do uh, maybe like a tablespoon of the quinacridone crimson. And then we don't need as much of the phthalo green blue shade. So I can put a smaller amount of that here, probably half a teaspoon. And then lastly, I need very little of the black, the Mars black. So I can put like a half a teaspoon of that down. Okay, so those are the five colors that we're going to use. And I'm going to move them this way. I have paper towels handy because between each time I switch color, I just wipe it off on a paper towel. And then I've got a Liquitex Freestyle palette knife. It's stainless steel, which is really nice because as I have other knives that have gotten gunked up with paint. This is a new one just for you guys. Aren't you lucky? But <laughs> I just love working with a new knife. But um, if you have one that gets credit up, you can put it in water and let it soak. And because this is stainless steel, it's not gonna rust. So it's really easy just to scrape it off with like an old toothbrush or um, even just like, a, a, like a, an old credit card or something like that to get any excess paint off. And I've even used steel wool on them to keep them very clean. Okay. But if you don't have this knife, that's fine. You can use any type of a palette knife. One class I did with heavy body, someone even used popsicle sticks. So it might be a little more challenging, but you can use whatever kind of tool that you have to apply this color. I just li like our um, freestyle knives. Okay. This, and this happens to be a size 12, but you can use um, whatever size you might have handy. Now there's different strategies to start a painting. I think with this, I'm going to start with... Um, Let's start with the, uh, the watermelon part because hey, that's why we're painting this, right? So we're gonna use the quinacridone crimson. When we're looking at the main painting, we've got darker value quinacridone here and then lighter value here and here, okay? So in order to get this lighter value, we're just gonna add a little bit of the titanium white. So I'm gonna take some of my quinacridone crimson, move it over. 
and just a tiny bit of the white because you can always add more if you think you don't have enough. So I, I don't know if you saw that, it was probably about a pea size amount of titanium white to a half a teaspoon of quinacridone crimson. And I think I want it a little tiny bit lighter. So I'm gonna get another maybe small pea size amount of white and mix it in. One thing to remember when you're working with acrylics, especially if you're an oil painter trying acrylics for you know the first time, I'm gonna get a little more white guys. So probably three small pea size amounts of white to a half teaspoon of red. But if you're an oil painter and you're switching to acrylics, or even if you're, you know, if you're new to acrylics in general, just know that acrylics do something called a value shift or color shift. So the color will look slightly darker than it does when wet. So you wanna anticipate that a bit and maybe mix a color slightly lighter than you think because it will darken as it dries, right? Oils don't do that, but that is something that with acrylics it's good to be aware of. So I've got my lighter value quinacridone crimson. And I'm just going to use this, the flat edge of my knife against the flat edge of the watermelon. And I'm just going to quickly scrape it on. This is what I love about palette knife painting. It's so easy to get a quick area of color down. And it's forgiving. Like, see this little blip I did? I can correct that when I do the background. So that's not a big deal. All right, and over here, I'm going to take a little bit more. And I'm in order to keep this surface flat, for you guys, or you know, the right angle for you, I'm gonna turn my arm and just scrape it on up here. But if, at home, you can move your canvas however you'd like to make it easy for you to apply it. So we'll just scrape that on. And again, you can see I'm not being really perfectionistic. I'm just kind of getting it on there quickly. And if I want more texture, it's very easy to add that. Um, but right now, I'm just blocking in the color. All right, and now I'm going to wipe off my knife. I'm not going to bother cleaning off the color because now I'm just going to go to the uh, quinacridone crimson right out of the tube. And I'm going to block that in down here. And it's OK if I get a little visual mix of that lighter quinacridone because I'm not um, you know, I'm fine with that. It's a it's a visual blend of those colors. So I'm good with that uh, darker value quinacridone, quinacridone crimson mixing with my lighter value. I'm leaving room for the white of my rind that we're going to do later. And then I have some of the darker value quin crimson over here. Any questions? Are we doing okay? You guys with me? See, we're doing good. Everybody's just following along, I think. So it's looking awesome. There's Thank something you. so therapeutic about that sound too, by the way. But the sound That's crazy, yes. The canvas. <laughs> I totally agree. Very calming. Sometimes, yeah, I'll have a rougher canvas or whatnot, and it definitely makes a really nice, nice sound. Okay, so we're merging those colors. Um, and I'm gonna come up with a little bit more of the uh, quinacridone right out of the tube because I wanna redefine the front face of the watermelon. So can you see how we're doing that? We've got the quinacridone out of the tube, redefining the triangle shape here, the darker value down, down here. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap because I am gonna come back as a, as a final touch and put white right here just as a little highlight mark. But don't worry, if you if you cover that area, that's okay. You can put the thicker white on top. And that's another beauty part of working with thicker acrylic. You can just cover up something underneath, okay? So, all right, I like how I've defined that pretty well. So we'll just add a little bit more just for reflection and some texture. All right. Okay, now I am going to wipe off my knife. And let's block in our background because that's one of the next larger areas. 
again, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I'm just kind of working in large sections of color, right? So I like, I'm gonna get this background locked in. So the background is primarily the CAD yellow light or CAD free yellow light and a little bit of this quinacridone crimson. And then uh, I don't think I used any white with that. So if you can see here in the original, right here, I used the CAD free uh, yellow light right out of the tube and then kind of where the, um, the, the light, so this is where the light's mainly hitting the watermelon. On the outer perimeter, it goes a little bit darker with some of that quinacridone crimson making it orange. So we'll start with the CAD free yellow light right out of the tube. And I'm just gonna butt it right up next to my watermelon slice. And see how I smeared a little bit of red in there? Don't let that bother you. To me, that's part of the beauty part, or that's one of the beauty parts of painting this way is you get like a natural merging of the colors together. And so if I don't like that, I can just come back in with more of my um, lighter value uh, red and cover that up. But it's a very freeing way to work. I, at least that's how I like to approach it. I don't like to get too hung up on, oh no, I got my colors mixed here. I didn't want that to happen. And this is another thing too, with this nice long knife, I can come in and just straighten that knife or that line, just like that, right? So I've got that locked in. Let's make my uh, slightly darker value orange. So I've got the cat for yellow light. I'm gonna take uh, about a pea size amount of the quinacridone crimson. And that was like a little less than a half teaspoon of my cat for yellow light. Probably need a little bit more. I work pretty intuitively with mixing. It's hard for me to give you exact measurements, but the good part is you're seeing it. So you can kind of guesstimate based on um, how much you're seeing me add, but forgive me. If like it's, with, not it's like with cooking too, right? Like we, yeah. and grandmother made pasta from scratch and it was like, you couldn't get her to give you a measurement to save her life. It was like, I just poured it, it feels good. And you're like, wait, that's frustrating, but yeah. <laughs> The more, and that's, but the, to me, that's a be another beauty part of it. It's very forgiving and see it. I feel like this is a little too light. I want it a little tiny bit darker. So now I'll just add a little bit more. It's like a very tiny dab, probably not even a pea size amount, just a little dab. And, you know, there's times when you're painting, you'll mix up color and you didn't mix quite enough. So you got to mix some more. And that's just, that's part of it, you know, part of the process. So. All right, so this is darker value over here on this side of the watermelon. So I'll just quickly uh, place that in there. Again, I'm kind of thinking large patches of color. I can blend the edges afterward. I just want to get color down right now. See how quick it, quickly you can get a large surface area covered? Just love it. Not that I want painting to be quick, but to me that helps give you a sense of accomplishment and then you can, you know, focus on some of the more detailed areas when you have, when you're ready. All right, so I'm getting, I'm gonna come all the way down to the table uh, line. I keep wanting to say horizon line, but you know what I mean, the, the table edge. And that there. Now I feel like I need a little bit more of the orange. So this time I'm not gonna maybe try to get it quite as dark because I wanna have kind of an intermediary uh, orange that's a little bit lighter. So it transitions between the yellow out of the tube and the darker yellow um, background. So I use the CAD for yellow light and just another tiny amount. In fact, I'm just gonna use all of that. I'll just squeeze more out if I need it. So again, probably less than a half a teaspoon, a teeny tiny amount. And I need a little bit more of my CAD for yellow light. So just mix, mix, mix. And now I can fill the space between the two. So you see how that's kind of an in-between color? not as dark, not as light, not as dark as this orange, not as uh, light as this one, but that's gonna help give me a nice transition of light in the background. So fill that gap there. 
And now the, one of the fun parts comes where since this paint is still all wet and free to uh, manipulate, I can take, if I want to um, add some light to the background, I can just take my CAD free yellow light and start kind of pouncing it on the background to kind of distribute that color a little bit, just to add some nice light variation and break up the background a bit. This is totally up to you. Now you see how when I came back on the light, I'm transferring some of this orange here. I tend to like that visual blend. If you don't, you can certainly just come back and add more yellow on top or clean your knife more so in between um, making marks. But part of the joy for me of palette knife painting is again that kind of effortless way the colors blend together based on how the knife hits the surface. So with that, you're the artist, you, you make your call on that. Hey Marla, can you hold up your um, finished piece for just a second? Yeah. Some people were asking just to see the finished. Yeah. Hey. So yeah, we're getting that transition, the bright yellow, the darker orange, and just same thing here, just kind of pouncing in the, the light variation in the back. Now, let's see, let's see. Um, I want to make sure I define this area down here. So I'm just gonna take that, I need to mix up a little more of that darker value orange. While you're mixing, Marla, um, we just had a question from Linny. Um, she's asking if she has a combo of like heavy body and basics paints. Mm -hmm. Do you achieve a similar texture with basics? Um, it's going to be more difficult for the background. It will you can get a similar texture, but if you want more of that painterly brush stroke retention, basics levels to a greater degree than heavy body. So you can certainly make a beautiful painting with it. It just may not hold some of that um, brush stroke that you see here or the knife stroke. See, it's hard to show it, but I can beef this up with heavy body. And when this dries, this texture will stay. With basics, it's going to shrink a little bit. But otherwise, color mixing and all of that, you can do all of the same things. It's just a little, it's going to be a little bit looser texture than the heavy body. The basics will, if that makes sense. Great, thanks. Good question. All right. Okay. So yeah, I'm kind of getting some of that blend, but I don't want all of that, so I'm going to cover it. So here we go, guys. So just like I said, you can just cover it. And to me, that just adds a little bit of history to your painting. Just wipe your knife in between if you want to minimize that. And there, I can just paint over it like it never happened. Okay. And I can adjust it more, but I just want to kind of block it in for now and move on to the, to the rind. I'm going to adjust this part too. I don't I want to soften that angle a little bit. Okay. So now we're coming to the rind portion of the um, watermelon. We'll go ahead and do that and then we'll do the, um, the table. So with the rind, obviously we have, well, let me show you again. We have bright white and then I really like this part in that it shows, it's a kind of green and red and white and yellow. So it's kind of, it's one of those things where when you look at things in real life, they have reflected light on them. Like we know logically that the watermelon rind is white but because of the way light hits it and things, we get to, to um, show that in paint by getting a little bit of the other colors into the white. So I don't know if that makes sense, but our eyes know it's white. We read it as white, even though when you really look at it, you've got other colors in it. So that to me is a fun part to show the dimension of the watermelon. And then we're gonna do the, um, the stripe lines, the classic stripe lines that watermelon have. So we'll move on to that now. So we've got the phthalo blue, I'm sorry, phthalo green blue shade. And that's gonna be the darker value part of the stripe. Um, so we'll leave that as is out of the tube, but then I also wanna make the lighter value green. 
with that color. So I need, <laughs> this is a case where I didn't squeeze out enough. I need more of my CAD free yellow light to add to my phalo green blue shade. So less than a half, oh, probably what a quarter teaspoon of yellow to an eighth teaspoon of green. And we'll see what we think of that mix. It's really, I've got three main colors in the rind. I've got the dark value green, which is right out of the tube. I've got this mid value green, which is uh, that's that what I just mixed on the surface, uh, the yellow and the green mixed together. And then I added pure yellow to give that lighter value. So three main values in the rind. We're mixing the middle value right now. Okay. So I think that's pretty good for the middle value green. I'm gonna wipe my knife. And then just because it starts at the top here, I'm gonna put um, my dark value green right out. So that's the phthalo green right out of the tube. I'm gonna leave this gap. That's the white of the rind. I'm gonna make a space for that. And then I'm just gonna draw that in with the tip of my palette knife. Now I'm gonna make this stripe a little bit bigger than it looks in the original because we're just gonna paint over it. And then th this is not, there's no real logic to this. It's just kind of how I'm feeling right now. I'm gonna be putting some dark green stripes down the edge of the rind. And again, we're gonna refine this as we work but I'm just gonna block in that darker value green. So now that we've got that, I can wipe my knife and I'm going to pick up my middle value green and I'm gonna paint right over that darker value because I want some of that blending. I wanna blend that dark value green into my light value green. I want that look. And then I'm gonna take more on my knife and I want this section to be maybe more of the pure green. And now I'm just gonna alternate. I'm gonna overlap this dark green a little bit. Let me hold it up. Uh oh, that's not, there we go. I'm gonna hold it up so you can see I'm slightly overlapping the dark green with my middle value green. And this looks really kind of clumsy in some ways, but we can we just keep refining it as we work. Okay. All right, and now we can add some of the pure yellow directly on top of this. So I'm just getting the CAD free yellow light right out of the tube, and I'm going to add some on top of my greens that I have. And we're gonna, it's gonna, it's still not gonna look quite right guys, but we're gonna just keep working with it, okay? And it, suddenly it will just reveal itself. It's kind of cool how that works. I always so love the feeling <laughs> when it all just kind of- What was that, Colleen? I said, I always love that when it all just kind of comes together, it's like, it always looks like, what, what am I doing? And then, yeah, what? a big old mess. Wow. <laughs> exactly. exactly, it's a big old mess. And all of a sudden, oh, now it makes more visual sense. <laughs> okay, so now we've got these colors blocked in. I'll show you the original again. Got the colors. We're still working towards this. And so we're, we're getting there. This is still a little unrefined, okay. But now what we're gonna do is um, tighten it up and make it a little more uh, recognizable or what we think of as those stripes. So to do that, I'm just, I'm just responding directly to what I have in front of me. I want to add a little more of the dark green back here. So I'm just gonna, so I'll just do that. Put the dark green right there. I'm gonna add some back here. And again, these color, I'm letting these colors smear and blend because that's what the part of the, what again, what I like about the looseness of palette knife painting. You're just kind of letting that paint marry together as you go. Just wanna jump in and give everybody a time check. We're about halfway through the class. 
Um, Marla's keeping a pretty good pace. I think it's looking great. And also just want to remind anyone um, that the class is being recorded and will be available about 24 to 48 hours from now on michaels.com slash classes um, or at Michael's YouTube. So you can feel free to watch this again if, if you find yourself falling behind a little bit or you want to do another one, um, you can watch it then. Yes, I love that fact. My mom always wants to see these, but she can never log in with it. So good that it's videoed. <laughs> so, or if I have friends, you know, who are working at different times of the day, we love that these are videoed. Okay, so rough that in a little bit more. And again, I'm just responding to this and looking at my original and I want to add a little more yellow here. Maybe a little bit there. So just let your painting talk to you. I know that sounds maybe a little cheesy, but just I often think of painting as a conversation. I'm, I'm just responding to what I see and adding my own input based on what I see. And uh, just working back and forth that way. And again, if I don't, if I think this doesn't look quite right, I can just come back in over it and take some of that yellow away. Just going back and forth with that. So let's take a pause on the green and what will help refine the green uh, rind is adding the white. So we're gonna do that now. Um, we'll start with this bit here, which is the bright white. So we just need the white right out of the tube, that titanium white. And we're literally just gonna place it. I use a fairly thick amount because I wanna make sure that lighter value white can cover my darker value red and my darker value green. So I'm just gonna use the tip of my knife to paint it on in that small kind of rectangular or, you know, I guess it's a parallelogram. When's the last time you heard that used parallelogram? <laughs> um, but I'm gonna have it fill that kind of parallelogram shape. And, and again, this is probably hard to see because it's the white of the canvas, but you know when the painting's in front of you, you wanna put white there. So it doesn't look like a blank spot in the canvas, all right? And then now we're gonna take and do the rest of the rind. Now in my painting, I, I got a little bit red happy here and I'm gonna cover up some of my red with the white. And actually I'm gonna add a little bit of green. So because I'm covering up red, I'm gonna get quite a bit of white on my knife and I'm going to place it here. And you can see that red is already starting to smear in there, but that's okay. Cause remember we talked about the concept of reflected color on the rind. So I want that to happen. I'm not, I'm not gonna let that freak me out because I, I want that reflected light. So this is how we're refining the space between the red and the green with this white. So again, just filling in this space. Now I'm not gonna want it to be that dominant red there. So I just have to add more white to kind of cover it up. And this is a case where that thickness of the heavy body really helps. Um, to any friends using the basics, you can cover it up, but it might be a little bit harder just because of, of that texture difference. But don't let it stress you. I mean, you can still cover it. And if it doesn't cover when it's wet, it'll cover when dry. So if you need to just come back in when the painting, dry, it, painting dries and cover it up with more white, you can certainly do that too. So now I've got kind of a pinkish rind. I want it to be a little greener based on the original here. So now what we're gonna do is just, I'm going to add a little bit of my middle value green right on top of that. And then just kind of drag that across the rind. And this is another thing where the more you work with it, the more it'll snap into making sense visually. And now I'm gonna get some more pure white and I'm gonna put it on top of that. I have a question coming in, Marla. That's a good one. Um, Judith is asking how she makes the left side of her watermelon look more like an edge and more 3D. So maybe she, you know, it blended a little Ooh. too much and became. Got it. Yeah. So for this side of the watermelon. Mm -hmm. So really the easiest way, I think that pops that and it'll be a little more dominant when it dries. I'm betting because that's what I've noticed from making these that, um, when it dries, the quinacridone crimson that right out of the tube darkens down quite a bit more than the light one we made. But this is really how you see the difference. This is lighter, this is darker, and that the definition between those two lines is what pops that dimension, right? So 
if on the one that we're painting now, you feel like you were, um, the colors aren't diverse enough, like this is not dramatically different enough from the quinacridone out of the tube, you can certainly add more white to your lighter quinacridone and just put it on this, uh, what's the word, plane, I guess surface plane of the watermelon. And that's gonna give you greater dimension. Because if you break it down by shapes, this long parallelogram is like that edge of a cut watermelon. And if the light's coming in from this direction, this would be a little bit brighter. Over here, we've got reflected light that's a little bit softer. So you can make this a little bit lighter up here if you want better dimension. Does that make sense? Yeah. You have a lot of, a lot of mathematical terms today, Marla. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the deal is. I'm not a mathy person, but so be it. OK. <laughs> All right. So Everybody's fresh off of uh, schooling their kids at home, you know? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Please. Yes. All right. <laughs> So, <laughs> all right, so I'm messing with this rind. I, um, I'm thinking I like that pretty well. I might let it sit and work on something else and come back. That's another thing you guys can do too. If you feel like a part isn't look, looking like you want or you need to give it a break, you can do that and work on another area and then come back to it. Because again, you've got a, we've been working for 40 minutes already and this paint is still nice and wet and will accept you know, being moved around some more. So you don't have to worry about it drying too quickly. But let's take a break on this area and I want to kind of evaluate where we are. Let's do for that um, artist who asked about lightening it up. Let's just do that. Um, I want to, let's make it look a little like it's going to pop a little bit more. So I'll take a little bit of my white, mix it in with my um, lighter quinacridone mix here. We can try and make it look like it's going to a more dimension. So slightly more bubble gummy pink, I guess. And so we can add that on top. Now you guys remember you can turn your canvas, but I gotta I gotta kind of look clumsy here and place it on them. I don't want to turn my canvas too much. But you can see how that already gives it a little more pop dimension. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. All right. And we're going to leave this part alone because this is more reflected light. Okay, so now let's work on the base and then we can have fun with the seeds and other refi uh, refining aspects. So the um, this part of the table, imagine this is probably like a white or a cream table. And then with that uh, reflecting of the background, it's got kind of that white creamy, uh, slight yellow tone to it. So I'm going to put, squeeze out some fresh white. Um, if you guys have plenty, great. But I'm gonna squeeze out some fresh white. And then I'm gonna add just the teeniest amount of yellow, like a, just a, I just dotted my palette knife in it. So it's a very minimal amount of yellow. And I'm gonna mix that in. And I've got some red residue on my knife. Again, that doesn't bother me. I kind of let my colors do what they wanna do on some level. But we're gonna block this in here. And to make that nice and straight, I can just uh, carefully do my knife work that way. I don't know if that made sense, but yeah, just. Now I'm gonna come in with the edge of my knife. So I'm using, I'm using the knife at an angle, probably about a 45 degree angle to the surface to just kind of, I don't know if the right, what the right word is, but cut into that shape and refine it. And it's okay that I'm gonna go over the whole surface, even though I'm gonna make this part a shadow. Um, all right, so I blocked in the lighter yellow, I'm sorry, the lighter, very slightly tinted white here. Now I want to get a darker value yellow here, and then we'll have it feather out to a light shadow. So you need to mix more of my, orange. So I took about probably a quarter teaspoon of yellow and I'm going to take just the tiniest amount of quinacridone crimson and mix that. And I have some white left on my palette knife and that's fine. So I'm going to mix that and this will be the shadow directly underneath the rind. So 
So you see how that helps define the rind already? I don't really like the angle I got there, but I can refine that some more. And I'll have that darker yellow come all the way up here. And now I'm just taking the tip of my knife and dragging it downward. Okay, now I'm going to add, let me squeeze out more white. So I totally underestimated how much <laughs> that happens with me, but I have it handy. You can just add more white, another half teaspoon. And now I'm going to just put it right next to the color that I've already mixed because I'm just, this is like a wet on wet technique. I'm just blending in with what I already have on the surface. And so that way it gives a natural kind of uh, feathering out of that shadow underneath. And that makes it different than the background a little bit too. All right. And I'll define this edge of my shadow. I'm going to take a little bit of that darker yellow. I'm going to mix it with some of my white. So probably two pea-sized amounts, pea-sized amount of my uh, orange mix and a pea-sized amount of white. And I'm going to use that to help refine the base of my shadow here. All right, let me show the original again, see what we're going for, okay? So the last thing I need to do is finish out this side. So I just took some pure white with just a little tiny amount of yellow and I want my, my uh, shadow to have definition. So I just fill in this triangular section of the canvas. I'll pick up a little bit of the orange just to make it a little bit darker than this side. And just mess around with it till I soften it uh, slightly. All right. So let's pause on that. Let's jump back up here. So I want to make sure we have time to um, keep refining. And let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> let's go ahead and do the seeds and then we can um, do any more little refining we need to do. Okay, so the seeds are literally just Mars black right out of the tube. And I take the um, tip of my knife and I uh, just drag it through the paint. I'm gonna use the rounded tip of my knife to get the rounded part of a seed and then just pick it up slowly. And that gives you kind of a teardrop shape. You can see that. I'll try and do another one. Um, up close. So just a little bit on my knife, the rounded part of the seed, push it down and then lift it. And if it doesn't give the teardrop, I can just use my knife to make a little line to make a teardrop shape. And so I'll just do a few more of those on here. You put them wherever you think makes Oops. sense. Yes, Pauline. I was just going to say we have about 15 minutes left in the class. So we're ahead of here. Um, but I remind everyone, um, again, this class is being recorded. So if you want to watch that about 24 to 48 hours from now, you can find it at michaels.com slash classes or Michael's YouTube. Also, we really would love to see your artwork. And I know Marla would love to see um, if you guys painted along today or, or any other day. Um, feel free to tag her uh, at Marla Morrison Art um, if you post it to social media. And also please tag at Liquitex Official. Um, we'll go ahead and pop and there's some hashtags you can use also um, make it with Michaels and hashtag make art with Michaels. Um, we'd love to see what you guys have created. Yes, that's like my favorite part. So got some seeds down. Now I'll see how this on a couple of these I might have some black that I don't like that I just don't like where it is. So what I can do is um, if since this is on the, the darker value red, I'll just take some of that and I'll just drag it right next to it. And if I smear my black a little bit, that's okay. I, I did that in my original one too. And I just felt like it was part of the painting. 
but I can just add more red to help cover that. And just think of kind of out, oops, outlining it. Now, if I get too much black, I can easily scrape it off and then come back in. So that's the way you can refine um, your seed shape if it didn't turn out quite like a little teardrop shape or like what you wanted. Just come back in with thicker paint and, uh, and just outline the shape that way. And I'm getting some black in there, but again, I can just pick it up with my knife if I don't like it and add more red where I want it. And to me, when you look at artists that, um, whenever I do impasto work like this, I mean, this is not super thick impasto, right? But whenever I do work like this, I think of an artist like Van Gogh. And when you see his work up close, you realize how, this may sound strange, but how imperfect it is, yet it still has this beautiful life and vibrancy. And it's because I think when he's working, he just is capturing kind of the essence of the shape and the essence of the color. And when it comes together, our, our eyes read it very easily. But when you look at, it up, look at it up close, it may not look, quote, perfect. And so I kind of keep that in mind because I can be kind of perfectionistic with things. So I like to remember that it's okay to have some looseness and some, quote, imperfection because that can add life to the image, I think. Um, so, all right, so we've got some seeds. So for the seeds on the side, it's hard to tell, but what I did do is I added the tiniest amount of red to lighten the seed a bit, since this is technically where more light is hitting it. So we'll take a tiny amount of the black and just about half, so two pea-sized amounts, pea-sized amount of red and a pea-sized amount of black and mix it together. And it's subtle, but I just like knowing that the, the, the seeds on that light surface are gonna be slightly lighter value than the seeds on the large flat plane. And I just have a few on here. And again, think loose, doesn't have to be perfect. And just kind of draw those on or paint those on where you want them. Just to chime in uh, one more time here. Um, everybody is enjoying the class today. Uh, just so you know, tomorrow um, you guys will get a link in an email to a survey. So if you enjoyed the class today and you'd like to let us know how much you loved it, um, that would be great. It's just a quick survey. And then also in the comments, if there's something else you'd like to see from Marla or from Liquitex, um, we'd be happy to take suggestions. And then once Marla's finished here, um, we can show you her next class. If you'd like to sign up, I'll go ahead and post the, the link to that in the chat and you guys can sign up. It's gonna be a lighthouse. Yes, I'm looking forward to that one too. So thank you, Colleen. And for this part, I wanna show, remember we left a little bit of white or if you didn't, that's okay. We're just gonna take some pure white right now and drag, get it on the, um, the side of your palette knife if, if possible. And you're just gonna try and drag that along that line. Just on the very edge of, imagine the edge of a slice of watermelon and it's glistening because it's, you know, a juicy piece of watermelon. So you wanna show that reflected white light. And that's like we have here, okay? So just a little detail that I think helps the dimension. And if it's too, if it gets too fat, like I think mine got a little too fat there, I can just come in with my red and thin it. Just like totally correctable painting process. And then here, do it over here too, just to thin out that line a bit. And there's your little highlight. Okay. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm going to add a little bit of texture just for fun because I want, I got quite thick texture on my white and so I want some more texture on my watermelon. So now I'm just adding um, the quinacridone crimson right out of the tube. And I'm just making some thick 
paint marks. Because again, I think it's nice to have that dimension that the heavy body paint allows for. And so we'll add that. And then in this surface area, I want to add some more texture here. So I'll go back to my lighter value quinacridone and just dab that on. So this is where you can really have a lot of fun with it. If you really get into texture, you can keep adding and adding and adding. And that heavy body will hold on to your knife stroke nicely. Okay. And then Marla, so I got a little oops, yeah. could, could, um, could they use different mediums um, and with yeah. the different textures? Yes, so if you have, so back to, if you have basics, um, acrylic, for example, and you want that texture, our gloss heavy gel or gloss super heavy gel, you can mix it with that. And that'll help give you more of a heavy body texture. And it will retain your knife stroke or brush stroke, which is really nice. Just know that the more of that you add to your color, the more transparent your color will become, which is typically fine. but um, just be aware that that will happen. Whenever you add a gel or medium to acrylic paint, the more you add, the more uh, transparency you're adding as well. So um, just be prepared for that. So you can certainly do that and, and add texture to your painting. All right, guys. So I think I'm about done. I would love to see what you've done. Um, let me just show it. This is the original. My watermelon slice is a little smaller, I see. <laughs> that always happens, <laughs> different sizing, but same idea. So let me see what you guys have done, if you don't mind. Yeah, if you go to my up your paintings. Oh, there's some good ones. Ooh, Marianne, very nice. I like your rind there, you got it. Ooh, nice. Very cool. I love the different color variations. There's some really pinky watermelon that I like. Beautiful. Sophia, Melly, nice. This is so fun. I love that you guys have been, oh, I like your outlines on yours. I can't see your name. Callie, that's nice. Neat, thank you guys so much. Thanks for sharing, everybody. So Colleen had mentioned this before. I wanted to show this too, just in case. I'm, I'm one of those people that sometimes it helps me to see it written. Let me, uh, okay. So um, if you're interested in uh, lots of technical information about acrylic painting, two great sources. One is at Liquitex Official. That's a great place to see um, artists working with Liquitex and get other painting ideas. This one at Tefatna is a great technical resource and it's um, he'll interview different artists and it's just a really great source for all things art materials. This is me, I'm at Marla Morrison Art. I would love um, to have you as part of my painting journey on that site and I'd love to connect with you there. And then Colleen always already mentioned make it with Michael's hashtag and hashtag Michael's classes where you can post what you've done today. If you tag me, I would love to see that and I definitely post it in my stories too. Um, let me get the, my next class piece. Um, it's gonna be a watermelon, I mean, not a watermelon, it's gonna be a lighthouse. <laughs> And it's done with basics acrylics. And so for the painter who had basics, this would be a great one for you. Um, you'll be ready to go with it. But Colleen, I forgot when it's going to be. But, uh, <laughs> but this be is what July, we'll July 20th. It's another Tuesday. And at the same time as this class today. OK, perfect. 1 so, p.m. Central Standard Time. A little seaside piece there. So do you have any other questions for me about the watermelon or anything acrylic related? Not that I saw in the chat, but if anybody has anything, they can pop it in. We got a couple minutes. If not, we'll just wrap it up. Oh, somebody said they used gouache today, so that's cool. They did what? Oh, they used gouache. Nice. Mm -hmm. Pro gouache, yeah. So who's going to go pick some watermelon? And get some watermelon? <laughs> I was thinking that. Um, I don't know. Does anyone have a really good technique for choosing watermelon? 
because mine, I'll tell you mine. Mine is to pick a, maybe this is silly, but I pick a watermelon and I pick it up and it's, if it feels heavier than I think it should, I'm like, that's probably a good watermelon. And it's been pretty good so far. Does anyone have any other tips? Like it needs to not have any yellow spots or anything like that. <laughs> I feel like Not it has really. something to do with the lines on the outside of the watermelon. Somebody had mentioned before that it was something to do with the so, thickness of the lines something. or something. I don't know. So if you dump it and it feels hollow, it's good. But someone else said it doesn't sound good. So I don't know. <laughs> but I guess it, neither of us have good good tips for choosing a watermelon. No. I don't know. Well, it was really fun painting with you guys today. Thanks for sharing your 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 uh time with me and love to see you for the lighthouse and the other classes we have coming up. Yes, thank, thank you everyone you. for joining us. Again, please, if you get the survey tomorrow and you enjoy today's class, please make sure you let us know. And thank you for joining. We hope you enjoyed. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Bye.